Hello, guys. Welcome once more to the GCE Math panel. In this particular paper, we are looking at June 2018, Pure Math Mechanics and Pure Math Statistics, Paper 2, Question 8. Guys, please, if you have not subscribed to our channel, now is the best time to do so. Why? Because there are most of our videos which, if you are not subscribed, you cannot watch them. If you ask those who have subscribed, they will tell you that those who have not subscribed cannot watch some of our videos. And that's just it. So we are equally begging on you not to just subscribe, but to click on the notifications and to share this video on other WhatsApp study groups and on Facebook. You can equally join us on www.gcmathpanel.com where we have past questions and solutions, not just for mathematics, but other subjects. Note, this panel has changed from the GC Math Panel to the GCE Panel. We plead on you to watch this video to the end and to leave your comments. Without those comments, without your subscription, without sharing our videos, we will not know if you enjoy our content or not, and we will not be motivated to make many more content. And sharing this content might just save the life of a brother or a sister somewhere who is actually in difficulty. And God will richly bless you as you share our videos. Thank you. Let's tackle this question, which reads, find the general solution of sine x plus pi on 6 equals 2 cos x. So go step by step. With this question, what I advise is, it's difficult to have um, maybe a shortcut for sine, sine, or cos, cos. Why? Because the two on the right-hand side is going to be some sort of a disturbance. So what we do here is we expand the left-hand side, bring like terms together, and simplify. So sine x plus pi on 6 will be sine x cos pi on 6 plus cos x sine pi on 6. And that will be called 2 cos x. But you know that cos pi on 6 is equal to root 3 on 2, y sine pi on 6 is a half. So multiply all this by 2, we will have root 3 sine x plus cos x to be equal to 4 cos x. Bringing like terms together will give us uh, root 3 times x to be equal to 3 cos x. Now, if we divide both sides by cos x, uh, root 3 cos x, this is what we are going to have. Or let me say we divide both sides by 3 cos x, uh, we are going to have fan x to be equal to root 3. When you do the division, this is what you are going to have. And from here, the general solution of tan x equals root 3 will be pi on 3 plus or minus n pi. Why? Because the period of the pi of the tan theta function is pi and not 2 pi like sine and cosine. So this is the general solution where n is an element of the set of integers. Now, the second part of the equation reads the vector equations of two lines L1 and L2 are such that L1 is that and L2 is that, find A, the point of intersection of the line L1 and L2. So for the point of intersection, guys, we just have to equate line one to line two, and I'm using the column matrix form, or column vector form, rather. So we will have one plus two lambda, two plus lambda, zero plus three lambda to be equal to zero plus mu, minus one plus two mu, minus four plus five mu, that's for line one and line two. And we come out of these equations, where we, when we solve for mu and lambda, we'll have five and seven respectively. After solving for mu and lambda, you have five and seven respectively. You can now substitute either mu or lambda in the respective equation, and that will give you the intersection uh, vector, which is R0. So R0 will be one, two, zero, if you are using the first vector, plus seven into two, one, three. And that will give us the point of intersection to be 15, 9, 21. Now be the vector parametric equation of the plane containing L1 and L2. Now the vector equation of the plane is given by R equals R0, that's the point of intersection, plus lambda D1, where D1 is the direction vector, plus mu D2, where D2 is the direction vector of uh, the line two. So this just give us 15, 9, 21, plus lambda into two, one, three, plus mu into three, two, five. So it's a vector parametric equation of the uh, plane containing the containing L1 and L2. So there's some sort of confusion here. We've got about vector parametric. So this is this equation is called the vector parametric equation. Okay. So don't be confused with this. Guys, if you have not subscribed to our channel, this is the best time to do it because most of our videos are one, not on YouTube. So you have to go to www.gcmathwell.com where you have the many videos or if you are not subscribed to YouTube, because only subscribers can see some of the videos, it'd be good that you subscribe. When you subscribe, we encourage us to make more content. And when we make more content, we serve you better. So we are depending on your subscriptions 
please subscribe please subscribe and see you in question eight click on the link below this video in the description and you will be moved to the page for the complete correction or click on the link on the button somewhere around this video and you'll be moved to the complete correction see you in question nine thank you so much and bye bye